Hello everyone and welcome back to Silver and Sensational. I am Jessica Lynn Verdi, the not yet silver part of this show. <laughs> but one day it will soon be. One and I get day, to bask. yeah. <laughs> one day. It's happening. It's on its way. Uh, and I get to bask in the glory of the sensational silver herself, Lois Mills. And I am silver. There's no question about that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Lois, otherwise known as It Is I. So, Jessica, hello to you and hello to everyone out there. And thank you so much for tuning in today. We have to remind you that we are in the middle of our giveaway, sweepstakes, whatever you want to call it, our challenge to get us to 2,500 subscribers here on YouTube. The best way you can help us do that is just click subscribe right now. While you're there, you might as well click like on this video and the notification bell. And once we get to 2,500 subscribers, we're kicking off our Jones Road Miracle Bomb giveaway where we're going to give you all 10 colors of the Jones Road Miracle Bomb, a literal miracle makeup product, no matter who you are. The product is awesome. Absolutely <laughs> totally. awesome. Totally. And it's a $400 worth of product that you, you will be You bet it is. You bet it's, it is. It's not nothing. It's exciting. You'll probably never need another makeup product again. So help us get to 2500 Support this channel, click subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. And if you do hit that notification button, you'll be the first to know how to enter that sweepstakes once we've hit 2,500 subscribers. Okay, so Lois, the last couple episodes, we've been talking about dating and I really feel like we're doing people a service out there who are brand new to the dating world, let's say after a divorce, after the loss of their partner, haven't mated for a long time and are afraid. And I think we're giving them a healthy dose of like, you know, look out for this, but enjoy yourself, you know. And now tonight or today, we want to give everyone some tips for what to do before and during the first date. Yeah, listen, I think I think we're giving you a dose of reality. Sure. And um, so we've talked about getting, you know, how to get your toe in the water for dating online. And then we talked about what to be aware of and how to be safe while right. being on um, dating app, uh, dating sites online. And I'm looking forward to talking about calming those first date jitters. I'm so excited to do this because... I thought I was exempt from jitters at a certain point in my life. <laughs> yes. And then I, I swear to God. And then all of a sudden I found myself on a date. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I think first date jitters are, are a universal mm -hmm. age old thing. And, oh. and so we're going to help them get through it. So, you know, I mean, listen, first dates are both exciting and scary. And... um Assuming that you either met online or somebody fixed you up and it's somewhat of a blind date, or even if you met once uh, at a party, it wasn't a date. And so it makes a difference. Don't you Can think? Can I ask you? Mm -hmm. I do. I think, why do you think they're, because I think you're totally right. They are scary and exciting. What are those two emotions? Where are they coming from? <sighs> okay. So... They're scary because you're not, first of all, I was never quite sure, do I really want to be doing this? Yes. <laughs> do I actually want to be on a date with this person? Do I want to put myself in a position of being rejected? Oh, sure. Scary. Scary. That is scary. And then, of course, the exciting part is, gee, this person finds me attractive and... I find him somewhat attractive, so maybe this could be something. Right. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of emotion going on, and, and sometimes I think maybe we've, we just put too much pressure on ourselves about first dates. Oh, Lois, it took me a very long time to learn that just because some guy gets me hot, it doesn't mean my future has to change immediately. So, Because <laughs> I feel like ex exciting and scary are all those emotions wrapped up about what the future can potentially be. So 
I think maybe even before we get into how you prepare for this first date, this person does not have to be the end all be all. Just go and have some fun and see what happens. Oh, absolutely. Please, please, please don't put the pressure on yourself. And better yet, don't put unrealistic expectations on the date. So maybe... Maybe, you know, after you've swiped and he's swiped or she's swiped mm-hmm, and now you, mm-hmm. you know, you start texting and then maybe after texting, you might decide to have phone calls. As we mentioned in uh, in the last, I think it was the last episode, you know, I really think it's best to try to arrange a Zoom call. So firstly, you know, it's really good to see if they have represented themselves honestly in their uh, nowadays there's no reason why someone wouldn't agree to that i i mean we talked about a lot of red flags last episode too and this was such a good piece of advice and if someone doesn't want to do a zoom call or a facetime oh, call I, before I they meet I w- with you i wouldn't even I, that would be the end of it correct experts experts and i don't know who these experts are <laughs> and what kind of experts they are they're they but they're, they're, they. they're this <laughs> invisible they that exists out there so everywhere i looked i see that experts say to try to meet within 17 to 23 days not 24 but 23 days that's interesting after your first contact hmm. Okay, I, I will keep that in mind. You know, I, will, I will cut it off if you if it does if it gets past twenty four in the future. I I see some of the logic behind it. You know, it's a little over two weeks. Let's not assume that you're talking every single day. So let's say right. in the in the seventeen day time frame, you may have spoken four to six times. And so, what I also like about this too, and I didn't think about it. Um, not meeting too quickly either. You've given someone the opportunity to show up, show interest in you, not going immediately to meet me at my bar down the street, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not, you know, meet somewhere in between one day and 23 days of meeting, 17 and 23. Don't meet them before that. I think that's important. I I do too. I really do. I think you need to have, um, you know, X number of texts that um, you see if he responds to your texts um, and you determine, you know, usually people make it through the text stage because everybody's trying. You'd to be-, be surprised. You'd be surprised. They, they do fall off. It, I'm just saying there's different ways to tell. It actually is reminding me of the first job I had. I worked at a deli for 10 years and I had the most inept manager he was he was angering he would go smoke cigars during the lunch rush and he was just <laughs> u- useless man and he granted he hired me sight unseen after one you know meeting and he hired well but then he'd hired these other kids or whatever and not have them come for a second interview to see if they'd even show up to that or if they would present as well. And lo and behold, those people, after getting hired after the first interview, wouldn't show up or they'd be awful. So you really need that second opportunity to rise to the challenge before you've made a full decision. It's kind of reminding me of that. Yeah. No, no. You you know, you do the texting and then if that holds up, then you move on to phone calls. Now you can right, connect right. a voice. I can and genuinely tell you no one my age wants to do a phone call. And I know this program isn't for people my age, but just even you saying that's causing me stress. <laughs> I do not want to talk on the phone, Lois. And you know, they say too, the way you flirt and connect with somebody is the way they'll dump you. So if you've gotten to the phone call stage, they'll dump you that way. If you've only talked to somebody via text, they're only going to dump you via text. So (laughs) is that great? Is that great? Okay. But let's say people my age still like phone calls and, you know, and, and that, that goes for dating or other than very short, I'll pick you up at seven, which I'm okay with texting. I like to talk to somebody because 
my fingers don't flow fast enough and my diction apparently isn't good enough for, <laughs> for oh, okay the, Siri. and, and <laughs> yes and for Siri to type type a message correctly oh, so Jesus. yes so I um I do like phone calls and I think most people in my age range do but we'll move on because another thing you can do uh, while you're on a Zoom call, is maybe you can sort of plan a fun date, I'm not saying necessarily together, but here you get some kind of participation. What do you think about that, Jessica? You know? I think it's really smart because you've given yourself, rather than putting the pressure on, I'm, I'm going to have the Zoom call and not know what to talk about, you guys have set a topic for the conversation and then allow it to go to other mm -hmm. places. And then you're getting a sense of this person's compromise or, or interest in what your uh, comfortability would be. Again, like I don't want to tell someone that they have to be a detective throughout this process, but, but if this person's going to get to see your boobies, you've got to be somewhat interested in how worthy they are. I agree. I agree. So, so I think these are all different opportunities. Booby to sightings get a sense. don't come cheap. <laughs> Believe me, there was a time where I, I I let them go too easily, and I, I regret every one. <laughs> so yes, I think it's very smart. I to, hope this makes it through the YouTube people. <laughs> it's very possible I'll edit it before, but but that's why I said boobies. So you know, I just love that you've given. Um, parameters, especially because, you know, you're not necessarily an extrovert by trade. You've learned how to be. Yes. I'm an extrovert by trade, but I still experience social anxiety. And so I had to learn how to overcome that. So whether you're an introvert, omnivert, like myself, extroverted, you still have social anxiety and you want to give everyone the best opportunity to, to be comfortable um, cause it, especially extroverts tend to be interested in introverts. So the more you understand about the introvert, you need to give them some parameters so that they can feel more comfortable. I, and I think saying, Hey, let's talk about what we'll be doing on our first date helps both oh, parties. I, I think so. I think it does. It sort of uh, breaks the ice as they used mm -hmm. to say. But, uh, again, we remind you to make sure you pick a public place. And then if you didn't listen to the last episode, go back and listen now uh, to all of the red flags and uh, that we talk about in terms of that any date, whether it's first, right. second, or but just just to be safe. So do listen to that. I think we covered a lot of good pointers and um, something you should keep in mind. That's so, exactly right. Jessica. Where are we? We need to get ready for this. So I, now you've said, you've done the Zoom call, you've gotten on the phone, all these anxiety ridden things, and you're headed towards the biggest anxiety part of the event is actually meeting in real life. Lois, I, like I said, I'm, I have suffered from social anxiety. I, People, I shocked people because I, I was in the arts. I do theater. I go out and auditions. I was great in a, at a party. And I would just be crippled inside from this social anxiety. And then I started doing improv. And literally after being on stage without a net so many times and also being on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication, my... Anxiety drifted away socially, really and truly. Like occasionally it will percolate, but for the most part, I'm really comfortable in my own skin. I'm comfortable on stage in an unknown setting. And I and boy, did I it shocked me when the last first date I went on, not with my current boyfriend, but because my my boyfriend and I met online. So our first date was over the internet. When I went on my last first physical date, I was sick to my stomach, so much so that I wanted to cancel it, Lois. And I wasn't even sure I liked this guy also so much. I was petrified. I was certain that I didn't really? have the right outfit. Oh my God. I, I don't know. Even as <laughs> so much so that I was uninteresting on the date, I can, I can promise you that. And then when we were both waving goodbye after the end of the date, 
I went to pull out of the parking garage, my parking spot, and I turned out of the parking spot too soon and scraped my entire bender against the cement post and pulled the fender off of my car. Oh, Jesus. And then when he pulled past me, I just waved because I didn't want him to stop and help me. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he was so... I was an adult, Lois. I was 32, 33, and couldn't... It had been a very long time since I had been on a date, to be fair. A genuinely very long time. And this guy, he was an actor, and he was handsome, and I actually knew him from a TV show. And when we matched, I didn't even believe he was the real person. To the Like, I had to say, please send a picture of yourself to, to prove that you are this person that you say you are. And he liked me. I couldn't believe it. So I think also a little bit of starstruckedness was going into this experience. Anyway, I, I was sick to my stomach. <laughs> okay, well. So I want to help our friends to avoid feeling this experience. Okay, well, here's a few things that can help all of us, all of us, whether you've, you're very confident or you're this mashugi person that she's just described. I know it doesn't sound like me at all. It was no, unbelievable. No, it doesn't. But um, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I think some of the starstruckness was was there. But I think it was a factor. For yeah, sure. I think it was a factor. But one of the things that I think everyone should keep in mind, and this is even not only for a first date, but also this is something I do uh, when I go to a party, which is not very often, but uh, I am very much not good at small talk. And so what you really want to do is to keep a few conversation starters in your head so that, um, you know, you're not sitting there mute, uh, scrambling for something to say and putting it all on the other person to have, uh, you know, to be holding up the conversation. So do, do, do that. Do, do that. Do, I think do that's that. so smart. Well, yeah, I think, it, listen, if you feel like that's disingenuous, all the movie stars do that when they go on Jimmy Fallon, when they would go to, you know, Johnny Carson, they would tell the producers the story they would want to tell. They had it all perfectly <laughs> figured out so that they could perform for America. So you having a couple of... Oh, I had the most interesting thing happen to me last week in your back pocket. Yeah, yeah. You're not doing anything false. You're helping yourself when Absolutely. the nerves take and, over. And and exactly because as soon as you can start um, holding your own, uh, you'll start to feel a lot better about what's going on. Because so, at this point in our life, we've experienced anxiety enough to know. That that too shall pass. So you're just doing yourself the 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 credit of getting through that as gracefully Absolutely. as possible. Absolutely. So, of course, you. It's always what am I going to wear? So it really is. Yes, absolutely. Point is, you want to dress to impress, but Jesus, don't look like you're trying too hard. And keep in mind where you're going, what the right. date is. If you're just right. meeting for coffee or you're going for a bike ride, you know, address appropriately for the occasion. And it's like you don't want to put on too much makeup if you're going on a bike ride, but learn if, how to, you know, put Miracle Bomb on your face instead. Exactly. Um, so you, you basically, uh, and that's very important because, you know, dressing appropriately shows the other person that you, A, are respectful of what you're doing, and B, you have confidence. And so even though, you know, you you know, you might want to look somewhat sexy, you know, don't be overtly Absolutely. sexy. Don't be overtly sexy because you're, again, unless you want to jump in bed with him that night, which I strongly advise you don't do, um, you know, cool it down a bit. Just don't look like you are trying too hard. Be yourself and dress the way you would dress, but under 
normal circumstances, but you know, if you're going to a very fine restaurant, you know, you could put on something that's perhaps a little dressier and, you know, a little more glamorous than if you're going to, God help us, you know, in and out burger, you know, but it, I, I particularly love this piece of advice, Lois, because especially the actor, the theater performer, the theater performer in me loves it when I my hair is perfectly done for the character. My outfit looks exactly right for the character. So I do actually put a lot of weight in making sure my outfit and appearance are perfectly suited for the for the opportunity. I feel like then I could be at my most free because I, you know, it's also making sure you're wearing Spanx if you really don't like how that makes you fit, but you know you, you they can't see the crease in your undies or all those things. It's taking care of those not not obsessively, but taking care of those little pieces, leave it so that you don't have to worry about that. Yes, for the rest and you're of the not night, pulling you know and you tugging and yes, correct. You know, or, or just you know, taking the mirror, fix, you know, touching your hair. Those are very annoying things. But so I genuinely, I don't think everyone has this luxury, but I genuinely reserve the last part of the day to get ready for big events or a date. So if I, because especially because I'm going to experience a little bit of nerves, I might call out of work early and start getting ready so that I I can like sit down in the dress and, the, and my outfit for an hour and make sure nothing falls out of place. I know this sounds a little crazy, no, but it this helps is, me this, feel this together. Is, this is the sign of someone who's done a lot of auditions. <laughs> that's Oh, well, that's exactly what it is. Actually, yeah. I realize it's because this is, I've got on less dates than I have auditions. That's what it is. Yeah, for sure. yeah, it's definitely that. So... And the next thing you want to do is be on time. Please, none of this fashionably late 20, 30 minutes. Seven to 10 minutes max. I think that's right. I'm for, I'm for showing up a little late so that you're not waiting for the guy. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, but that's by minutes, Lois. That's by minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I don't like waiting for people. And I don't think other people like waiting for people. So I think that just shows some kind of respect and, um, you know, it just shows a level of maturity and that. I think so too, because it's not yeah. like you're going to a party together and deciding to be late together. It's a different thing. Right. And you're so right. All of this information is, is actor Jessica. Um, I, I plan out how long it will take me via the method of transportation I'm taking, and I don't leave a minute sooner. Like, if it says it'll take me 30 minutes to get there from, you know, door to door, I leave so that there's only 30 minutes to get there. So that way I'm not accidentally early. If I'm late, genuinely traffic trip me up. You know what I mean? Um, but I also plan that earlier in the day because you can do that on your maps nowadays is I'm leaving at this time. I'd like to arrive by this time. So you can kind of I, – I like giving yourself those parameters because – out of all the things you cannot control in this situation, you can control how you look, when you arrive, and what you're going to talk about. And that helps ease a lot of the nerves. It, it really does. It really does. And um, if, you're, if you're going to a restaurant, um, I think it's wise to look at the menu ahead of time. I think that's so smart. Let's say you've arrived. Um, He's there already. He or she is there already. You arrive. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's a question of, do you want to hug? Do you not want to hug? I say just uh, play, it, play that one by ear. If you really feel this connection and you think they do, fine. Um, I feel like people hug out of discomfort and not knowing what else to do. I, I think so, but you know, it, it, but do keep in mind that someone else might want to do that. You know, so. I think that's fair. But you know, I I saw on a on a dating TV show that they said the best way to assess chemistry is shaking hands. You can actually get a like. I think this is I, it's interesting. You wouldn't think so, but I kind of like that if you're if you're setting the tone, you'll extend your hand. And you can get a sense of, do they hold your hand nicely? It, are, is it a dead fish? You know, it's still, it's like a business. It might make you think it's a business transaction, but you can get a sense of 
your chemistry better by shaking hands, which well, I love there's, that. Well, there's a kind of handshake that I think has has some has a lot of um, meaning, and that is when you shake somebody's hand, if you put the other hand on top of theirs. Oh. It, it's it's it, personal. It, it's personal. It becomes personal. So if you wanted to show uh, warmth towards that person, that's what I would do. It might be more appropriate to do that after the date. Um, you know, if you decide to kiss somebody on the cheek, uh, you know, you can extend your hand, put your other hand over, lean over and kiss them on the cheek. Some I people love that. hug. Yeah, I mean it's it it's it's a little more uh personal and adds more warmth than a handshake. I mean, because we handshake anybody, you know. So but you know, let's let's say now you're seated and the woman puts the menus down and you know, he says, Would you like a drink? Yes, I would. Please have a pretty good idea of what you want and try to make it simple. Oh my God. So try smart, to make it simple. Do not give the waitress or waiter Ugh. instructions on oh, how the you bartender should make the drink. And it's you not want your, this, this is not the time to impress them on your and you whiskey want that, knowledge. And you want this <laughs> just whether it's Kill me scotch now. and soda, <laughs> what do you recommend? How about what do you, what what kind of red wine would you recommend, or whatever it is that you're doing? Make it simple, and boy, keep drinking in check. Listen, ladies, I know some of you like to go out on dates to nice restaurants because some of us can't go there on our own. Right. And, but, you know, you don't want to make that other person say to himself, Jesus Christ, am I going to have to pick up the tab for this, for this slush? You $100 know, $100 uh, liquor for bill. For this lush, what slush? <laughs> for this I think lush. slush is better. I think slush is better. So get that part over quickly. And as you, you know, because you want to have a drink. Before you start ordering food, you know, this is right, not, right. this is not a fast food place. So you, they expect you to stay there. I mean, this, I think we're beyond the COVID. You have 90 minutes. You have 90 minutes to keep your table. I'm not seeing much of that anymore. So, Although, you know, it did happen to Alex and I at the restaurant we went to for Valentine's Day. This oh, guy could not, not get our order in more quickly. It's, oh. it, you know, that... That pisses well, me off, genuinely. Well, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, these are these are slam bam, thank you, ma'am, meals. You know, they really <laughs> they just come, get them through, get them through. You know, sure. So while you're there and um, you're having your cocktail, you know, if you're not a good listener, now is the time to learn, and you know, know when to talk and know when not to talk. And interrupting somebody is absolutely the, to me, when someone interrupts me, it's like I just shut down. Oh, I totally understand I, that. I shut down. You know, it's, all right, you want the floor, you take the floor, but I'm, I'm through. I I'm may not the floor. be, it may not be the nicest thing in the world, but where are you going that, you can't hold your thought until that person finishes. So, you know, do learn how to listen. And Well, I think it's a really interesting indicator as to that person's selfishness or even their maturity. If they're unable to hold their horses in a conversation, there's not a lot of maturity there. There's potentially, this is like really extreme, but there's potentially narcissism there. So it. They're in. I can totally understand why you shut down. Listen, I'm I'm famous for interrupting people because I'm actually engaged in the conversation. But I'm like, I want to I want to say what you're saying, and it excites me. I've had to learn how to hit sit on my hands because it's disrespectful and it does betray 
um, lack of maturity and lack of respect. It really does. I think so. I think so. And, you know, while that other person is talking, you know, show a genuine interest in what they're saying. Don't be um, thinking about what you're going to see. Exactly. Next. Exactly. I know. You can tell when someone's you can, just You can waiting. tell when somebody is doing that. They're, you know, I mean, they're just shy of looking at their watch. <laughs> saying how oh. much, you know, and if that other person is droning on and on, you've got your answer. Yeah. If they're not asking you questions, if they're not engaging you in a conversation, eat your dinner and call it a night, you know? And you just got your free steak, lady. You got your steak, (laughs) you know? So I'm assuming, and maybe it's wrong, but let's say the other person is suggesting a restaurant. Okay. You know, you're doing this beforehand. Right. And they're suggesting, you know, ABC seafood or whatever. And you say, oh, goodness, I love that place. Or that I haven't been there. I'd like to try it. Bad, bad, bad. Okay, fine. Sure, sure, sure. So while you're looking at the menu, and even if you've been to the place, you know, say, what is it that you like here? What do you suggest? This gives the other person... The option of telling you basically how much they want to spend. Wow. You this know, is a very classy way to do it, Lois. You know, again, you know, I really, I mean, I've, I've taken loads of people to meals. Men, women, you name it. And nothing will cause me to never ask someone again if they, if they, if they ordered the most expensive thing on the menu or something fairly high up, um, have, you know, two drinks. And I generally find these are people that never ask you back, much less, yeah, uh, much less spend that kind of money on their own. So I would say that um, it gives that person the option of saying, well, you know, I like the white fish here. Uh, and, right. you know, or you have to do the lobster because that's what they're known for. And, and that gives the person the opportunity to say, please order whatever you want. Like, you know, uh, I, I once heard that if, if, we're also in an era nowadays where men, I've gone on dates where guys say, I'm going to split this with you up front. Like mm-hmm. they're not interested in paying for the date, probably mm-hmm. because they've been burned by the girls that are, mm-hmm. you know, lining up dates for five nights a week so that they can get dinner. Um, so I'm all for having that earnest conversation that I'd like to pay for this dinner. You can definitely pay for next dinner or or I'd like to always pay. That could be a Zoom topic. Um But I've heard that if a guy wants to make a woman feel comfortable, he tells her that he's planning on ordering the lobster so that she knows that money's not an object or what he's willing to spend at at that restaurant. You know, I I guess you just said something. I guess if somebody said, well, I'm ordering the lobster, you know, at that point, I still would not order the lobster. I totally probably would do the same yeah. too, Lois. You know, I think and, your, and I, your I, I may go better. I may go back the next night and order the lobster if I'm eating by myself. <laughs> sure. But sure. I still I I, I I don't think I would do that unless You don't want to leave the impression no, as un- though unless this is someone your meal said ticket. listen, you have to have the lobster here. I'm more I'm having it and it's really better than any other place. Rada rada rada. Then we come to let's say there. I mean, if I were having a Zoom call with someone and we're talking about a restaurant, I personally would not bring up, I want to split the bill. Sure. Because I have a, a my own criteria for splitting bills with men. I'm from the old school, which I know you're not. If oh, I, I think I would rather a man... No, no, I I truly expect a man 
I understand. To pay for dinner. It's. Um, I understand that. Now, but I will, if I don't intend on coming across with anything, maybe a hug, maybe, but it's only going to be a handshake to say goodnight, then I say I'd like to split the bill. Smart. So that's your your indicator to them towards the end of the evening, how this went and what your interest exactly. level is. I think that's really smart. Exactly. I, I, I think because, and I got this from men, th- what I'm about to say. Many men I've spoken to say that they feel like they're, um, like when they're out, they look that they're just they're just dinner providers, you know. Yes, I'm right, paying totally. for dinners. I'm paying for dinners, and you know, day one, day two, day three, and I'm getting a hug and a hug and a hug. Now I know, I'm I, I know it sounds like you know there's a price to pay, but you know what? There is a price to pay. There, you know, you boil down things and there's somehow, there's an expectation at, that men have and women, you That's know exactly what right. that expectation is. So Booby shows. Exactly. If you don't want to, per, you know, live up to what their expert expectations are, whip out your credit card and pay your share. I, you know, I think... You're, you are a woman of integrity. No, I think I know you are a woman of integrity. And so what I think we're hoping to impart here is how to be a dater with integrity as well. Not just going out for these dinner dates, you know, yeah. being upfront about what being acting in accordance with the level of comfort that you're allowed that you're willing to give to I'm, this if person. I'm, if I'm really interested in someone, um, you know, I, and I say, you know, I would like to split the bill. Is that okay with you? And they say, no. And I said, okay, fine. End of story. There you go. But if I'm interested in maybe dates two, three or whatever, uh, I would just thank them for a lovely dinner. I think that is also where we're going to leave it today because what great advice, Lois, on start to finish, how do you get ready for this date? But now I think next episode, we really do got to talk about how do you know if it actually went well and what to expect after the date. And then I think we'll wrap up our series on dating. We'll see. If you folks want to hear that from us, let us know. Um, I think these have been valuable episodes of Silver and Sensational. If you think so, this is your opportunity to let us know by leaving a review wherever you're listening to us on the podcast sphere. You can also get in contact with us uh, at Silver and Sensational on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And if our uh, you can email us too at silverandsensational at gmail.com. And if our friends are watching us on YouTube now, Lois, what should they do? Well, first and foremost, do subscribe. Remember, we're trying to get to that 2,500 so you can get the series of 10 different shades of Miracle Bomb. But do subscribe and make you do write your comments in the, in the box that's provided. And then hit like, and very important for you to share us with your friends and family. And then hit the notification bell to let you know when our new episodes appear, although they're generally every Friday. Jessica always produces and gets us up and rolling every Friday. And in the meantime, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. And please, Jessica, thank you for everything you do and fun and fun conversation because we're coming from two different generations. So it's sort of good to really find out how the rest of you live, you know, but anyway... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jessica, and... Thank you, Lois, and we'll see you guys next week. You bet. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much for watching us today, and please 
hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode.